that's mine. And, and, I, and I'm going to see the Hi besties, I'm Amu and thank you so much for tuning in to Becoming Amu, period. <laughs> Listen, whatever it is that you're doing, make sure you're locked in, loaded and ready because today's video is definitely, definitely going to be worth your while. While you're here, please, please, please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button if you know you're enjoying my content you're vibing with the channel please also make sure to hit the post notification bell so that you're always informed when i drop another banger but most importantly please please make sure to comment down below because this is our channel it's not my channel it's our channel listen we're all becoming okay okay so without any further waste of time let's get into the video <laughs> so as you can probably tell from the title down below today i will be speaking about how i have returned how i am returning to my first love and listen this title is not clickbait guys um this title is actually derived from revelations 2 verse 4 to 5 which i'll read for you and it says yet i hold this against you you have forsaken the love you had at first repent and do the things you did at first this verse has really spoken to me and has really described the whole process that i've been going through at the moment um if you watched my first video you will know that there was a portion of it that i was just speaking about how i have or i how i had backslid from god and how i was you know slowly coming back and all and today i think i'm just gonna go deeper into that because i genuinely think it's so important to speak on my relationship our relationship with christ because i think that's the most important step and process of our becoming because we can't be without god you know so it's very important to speak on that and i'm going to speak on how i backslid and how i came back and um if you have a similar story if you're also going through something like that if you're also in an awkward place in your faith um please watch till the end also comment down below so yeah first thing we're going to speak about is how i personally um backslid from god and why i became distant to god um and i think this in simple terms i can say it's because i was very rebellious i wanted to do things my own way i didn't want to acknowledge christ as the lord over my life like i knew god was god and lord etc but i wanted to live my own way and i knew that i can't want to live my own way and say christ is my lord because if christ is your lord then you are under his lordship and i did not want to be under his lordship so my whole situation was very similar to the um situation of the prodigal son where you know what you take your stuff and you go because you think you know best you know and for me it wasn't necessarily thinking i knew best it was just wanting to live my own way because um if i'm being honest certain things in christianity had become burdensome to me um i i don't know that love was just deteriorating and it was just becoming a lot for me to do the things that god required and just living in christianity and all and i was tired so i wanted to do things my own way which is it's never the answer like it's generally never the answer and you'll see why so at first it was good i'm not gonna lie it was good i felt like the weight had been lifted off i felt no pressure i felt like i can binge watch however long i want to because um god had um i had convicted me um about binge watching because 
binging on anything is gluttony gluttony does not only it mostly refers to food yes but it does not necessarily refer to food it refers it refers to excessively doing certain things in excess in excessivity there we go so that's what i was doing with regards to shows i was binge watching and god had convicted me and so now that was another thing but once i had a backslid and i had decided to go my own way um i felt so free because i felt like okay now i can binge watch now i can watch whatever i want to whenever i want to yeah so i felt like i could binge watch whatever whenever i could do whatever i want to um without suffering any consequences i started praying less I started doing whatever I wanted to, whenever I wanted to. But the crazy thing is, God never felt gone. You know, like it never felt like he wasn't there, which to be honest, just made everything worse because it was as if I was spitting in his face. It was as if I know, it's like your dad tells you to do something and you go, or tells you not to do something, right? And you go in front of his face, like literally in front of his face, and you go, he tells you not to eat a chicken or something, I don't know. And you go in front of his face and you start like biting that chicken, like just devouring it. And that's how I felt. So it's just horrible. Like I really felt bad because I knew this is not what I should be doing and this is not what God deserves, you know? But at the same time, I was like, I wanna live life my own way. Um, so what I did do was me just trying to silence the voice of the Holy Spirit, which is a very dangerous thing to do because once you silence the voice of the Holy Spirit, you silence um, your conscious as well, you know, but I started doing that because I did not want to hear from God. I did not even want to imagine like I part of the reason I stopped praying was because it was like every time I'd sin and I was doing it intentionally. I'd sin, but it, but I know God is there and he's watching me. So I was just so ashamed of myself and just what I was doing, you know. And very quickly, I got so sick of just that cycle. I was very, very ashamed of myself, like just guilt ridden as well. And mm, it was just really, really bad. Um, this living however I wanted to was fun, but for a very... For a very short moment because after that it was just i was just guilt ridden but at the same time like i enjoyed doing things my own way but I, but i was still you know like i felt guilty and ashamed because i am a child of god at the end of the day you know i felt like a rebellious child which is exactly what i was like the prodigal son and then i started how i basically started coming back to god I started genuinely desiring to desire God again because I had lost my passion. I'd lost my love for Christ. I'd lost my love for the things of God. I'd lost my passion. And I desired to desire that because I did not desire that, but I wanted to desire that, you know? Like, um, I really wanted to live the right way. I wanted to want to live the right way. You know and so there's a verse in psalms 51 verse 12 which says restore to me the joy of my salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me and that was basically how i felt um after a short while i just felt like lord i need you to restore that joy of my salvation again i need you to grant in me that desire for you to grant in me the spirit that will sustain me in salvation you know i can't keep going in circles and yeah i desired that that was number one that got me like i believe god just like made me aware of this hole that was in my heart without him like regardless of the fact that i was doing things my own way and had freedom which wasn't really freedom because honestly the freedom of the devil just cages you again it cages you into sin the freedom of the devil is just like puts you in a box of sin you know so it's not really freedom it's it's lies you know but the freedom of god is the true freedom that frees you from sin that frees you from your flesh and all and i desired that freedom but yeah that was number one number two was because as y'all know i'm on this whole um 
thing and this whole journey of becoming which i don't think is a phase i think is gonna probably go through my the entirety of my life because we're always becoming and evolving but anyways of becoming and i realize i am nothing and i'm nobody without god like i genuinely have no future my future is genuinely in god like i do not believe in my capabilities as a soul person at all like that's me and i boast in that like i genuinely boast in that i'm happy that that's how it is but i don't see how i can become um how i can become um without god you know i can't i that can't happen and so that was the the other reason that made me just desire to come back to god and return to my first love because how am i gonna be me like honestly like i can just die because there's no way i'm gonna be me without god you know so that was my second thing and another reason uh one of the big ones as well that i can't fail to mention is because i'm gonna keep it real i'm gonna keep it 100 i do not want to go to hell i do not want to go to hell guys hell in the bible is described as such a horrible place in luke 13 28 the bible describes hell as in that place there will be weeping gnashing of teeth that's not the only descriptions we get in the bible of hell um it's a place of constant sorrow constant despair i do not want that i do not want to go to hell and this is eternity this is this is forever when you speak of forever you're speaking about eternity i do not want my eternity to be hell to be a place of torture and a place of misery i don't want that um and i don't think that's a bad i don't think that's a bad reason for you to want to go back to god because firstly the bible does say that seek first the kingdom of god right and another thing is if that's the reason that gets you to God, I do believe that in your seeking of God, in your reading the word, in your just getting into that pattern, you will find God for yourself. You will, he will reveal himself through his word. His word is alive and it's active and it's living. You know, it speaks to us. So he will really reveal his nature and who he is through his word. And the more you get to know God, the more in his presence you want to be. The more you get to know God, the more just around him and with him you want to be 24 7 you know so i think even if your reason is i don't want to go to hell that's a good enough reason to be like okay let me get to know this god let me get to just see what he wants for me you know and from there he just reveals himself like god really does all the work the holy spirit does all the work all we need to do is avail ourselves all we need to do is surrender ourselves to him and he does the transformation he does the changing our hearts it says in ezekiel that he will take our heart of stone and he will replace it with a tender heart you know and it's just it's that that's what the holy spirit does the holy spirit does the transformation and all of that all we need to do is surrender and part of me wanting to surrender was because i do not want to go to hell so with that then came the whole process of okay this is why i desire god now what do we do action you know all of that firstly i want to just highlight the importance of godly friends godly friends are so 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 vital and so important so with that said i just want to give a shout out to Ntako. Ntako, um that's my friend who has really helped me in returning back to god as i mentioned um the last time i am i was like already in the process of going back to god but it was very slow and inconsistent and Ntako saw that video because i was so ashamed to just reveal to any of my friends that i was going through what i was going through um spiritually but nzako saw that video and i believe just the holy spirit laid in her heart to come to me and she was like okay since i saw that um you've been trying to you know come back to god ever since you've backslid let's do this let's do a bible study we'll call each other because we're not in the same city 
we'll call each other at this time and we'll just do a Bible study together. And that has helped me so much because I've been so much more consistent in reading my Bible. And y'all, when I say the Bible, the word of God is powerful and it's alive. Like Ndapo played a part in bringing me back to God, but God did the whole thing of just making my heart for his like i am i genuinely feel so renewed by the holy spirit i feel so renewed by the holy spirit through his word through his word but yeah the word has really given me transformation and revival because just reading through john i see how god knows me firstly because i was made through christ everything in this world all creation has been made through christ and nothing has been made without christ you know so knowing that made me know that firstly god knows me and god knowing me means he knows me inside and out he knows all my dirties he knows he knows all, he knows me fully you know like not even my mother knows me how christ knows me not even i know me how christ knows me you know but i do know how unworthy i am i do know how dirty i am i do know how imperfect how shameful i am but even in christ knowing me the way i am god still wants fellowship with me the mere fact that god did not have to send his son to die for me he didn't like he owed me nothing <laughs> he did not have to do that but he did that so that i can have fellowship with him he has come to reconcile me with the father like everything to think that since the fall of mankind God had an entire plan to reconcile me back to him when he didn't have to. Like, I don't, guys, mankind is horrible. Personally, I wouldn't have done that. But just the love that God shows, you know, and it's always his love that revives me. Because I know no one else who loves me that way. I know no one else who cares for me that way. The way just like it's that fellowship i'm someone who like many of us has struggled with rejection in the past um or just feelings of rejection you know and just to know that in my imperfection in my entire state it's like i'm always trying to be perfect and um something i discovered with my therapist is that one of the reasons i'm trying to be perfect all the time and just be the best friend i can be and be the best future wife i can be and be the best this and be the best that is because a part of me is scared that if i reveal myself if i reveal myself and if you know me and if you know me and you know my weaknesses and you know my strengths but you know my toxic traits and all of that you will reject me you know and that is something that i have struggled with i get subconsciously for a long time and now very well aware but still working um through it and all but me being that person and knowing that god knows me fully because just like psalms 139 says he knitted me together he knows me he knows me and yet he chooses me and yet he wants me and yet he still gives me day after day to come back to him and to repent to come back to him and to live by his word yet he's still patient with me it says in the word that god is patient with us he does not want us to perish like it's just that it's that love it's it's all of that that makes me think this is who i'm stick beside that's my man and i'm stick <laughs> That's mine. And, 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 and that's <laughs> No, but honestly, because why would I not want to stick beside someone? Why would I not want to stick beside a being that wants me and desires me so much in my imperfection? A being that is so perfect and so righteous and so just but wants me a being that is so holy but wants me you know and that really that was the yeah the nail to the coffin because from that moment on just knowing that truth 
has made me so confident in the word, have made me come back to God, repent, you know, and say, I want to live for God. And now it's like when I do the things of God and when I see laws and things that he, he sets in place, they aren't burdensome or they don't seem burdensome to me. And, and now, if anything, they just seem like, like a privilege. Like, Lord, accept my worship. This is my worship. God, you want me to be pure. You want me to 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 be um not to be sexually immoral receive my worship god you want me to serve others to give to others lord receive my worship that is how i will worship you because what can i do not have enough i can never not i do not have enough thank yous to give to god for saving me for saving me from death for saving me i do i cannot there's not enough things i could give that would that would be sufficient to thank him so you know what whatever praise i can give him i'll give him whatever he asks of me is this little compared to the big sacrifice that christ made the fact that he loved me when i didn't love him the fact that he continued to seek me when i had stopped when i had given up the fact that he didn't stop it's all of that that just makes it all worth it in that moment of realizing understanding conceptualizing the love of god in that moment you're so content with everything you're just content with your being you're content with everything because you know that you're loved you're loved by god and that's everything that's everything you need you know so yeah that is how i have returned to my first love and that is how i will keep on returning to my first love and i pray that you pray for me because the devil sees this and he's like bet let's see you know and he brings out like fight like fighting gloves he's ready to fight but if we just keep each other accountable and we hold each other down in prayer we'll be good we'll be good so if you have a similar story to mine a different story whatever it is share it down below or hit me up on any of my socials i'm always answering my messages and dms or whatever so yeah and let's go through this journey together let's walk it together let's become in the right way you know but yeah that's the end of today's video if you've come this far thank you so much comment down below and yeah i will see you next week